in this episode, we'll be discussing just exactly why I believe Bitcoin will be going on its parabolic run much sooner than most people think, where I believe it'll top out, how long I believe this crypto bull run will last, as well as a ton of charts showing that altcoins are also on the verge of breaking out and taking off, and just one simple strategy to take advantage of this epic bull run we are headed into very, very soon, as well as three surprise altcoins, one with a test partnership with JP Morgan, and why the founder of Chainlink also believes that this is going to be an explosive time for crypto. All that and more in today's show. I'm your host, Megan Nelson, aka Crypto Megan, coming to you once again from sunny southern Marbella, Spain. I can once again see Africa from my terrace. It feels so good to be back. Lisbon was amazing. Web Summit was incredible, but I'm happy to be back in Marbella, bringing it all to you here on this channel. So if you want to hear all that and more, also, banks, why people are continuing to lose confidence and banks are no longer serving the purpose they once did. All of this is the perfect storm as a catalyst to this next move. Will you be ready? Of course you will be. And I will be getting ready for our champagne toast. I'll tell you about when that will be today on today's episode. And thank you for joining. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So as we get right into it here, this very first quote on Twitter from Elio Trades, I'm excited, but this is a long game. Don't count out the possibility of some scary drops along the way. This bull run feels like it's moving a bit faster than I had originally expected. Many crypto influencers and industry leaders have been very hesitant throughout this bear market because it's the first time in Bitcoin history that it's been paired with a macroeconomic bear market. Uh, there was a lot to be reticent about, to say the least. A lot of crypto exchanges failing, going down. And so the conservative play and some would say the intelligent play would be to ladder in slowly during that bear market. However, it would have been an excellent time to go in aggressively. Hindsight is 2020. A lot of people have been on the sidelines with dry powder waiting to get into this market and are realizing now that maybe this market is moving along faster than they anticipated. And that's what always happens with crypto markets. They when they do start to take off, they wait for no one. And that's why if you have no allocation, a lot of people get caught FOMOing into the tops of rallies and runs. And so it's best just to get positioned throughout throughout the entirety. If you didn't get positioned during the bear market, the time is now. The time is now. I mean, people are wondering, is there going to be a massive drop coming? I'll go over that today with all the charts. However, since we cannot time it, Time in the market is much more important than timing the market. And I'm going to say that until it gets through to you watching because it's just so important just to have exposure. Uh, you know, there will be massive drops and scary you know, corrections along the way, like he says, but that doesn't matter if you're really honed in on your strategy. And today we're going to get a little more specific on that strategy time wise. So let's check out the next piece. From plan B, I like plan B, you know, the stock to flow model has not failed yet and it's still on track and I believe that this is pretty accurate. So he says, in my opinion, Bitcoin is currently in a pre-bull market yellow on track toward a full-blown bull market, red, after having, unless the ETF is approved earlier. So he changed the colors before they were something different, but now he's changed it to suit this cycle better. And so here you have it. The green is the bear market and the yellow is the pre-bull. I think before he had it as accumulation. Uh, he's calling it the pre-bull. I'm calling it the bull market. And I got one comment in the last YouTube, and this is not to uh, call this person out at all. It's just to address it, actually, because I'm sure a lot of people think this. He said, how can you possibly think this is a bull run when the market cap, entire crypto market cap, is around a trillion dollars? And I understand that that's hard to assimilate, but... The bull run, you know, the very first phase is very slow, methodical, and it's almost like a slow bleed. It bores people so much that they just get out because they can't take it anymore. Things aren't moving. They don't believe it's ever going up again. And that's kind of like the exciting time. It seems as though we've already passed that time. And this same time last cycle, we were still in that period. And that's when I invested heavily in all of my coins that went on to do even 30 to 50 to 65 Xs. So... 
you know, it feels like things are picking up a little bit faster, this market. Here we're in the yellow, the pre-bull, but as you can see, this yellow doesn't last forever. And this yellow period, according to previous yellow periods, um, it should be changing to blue fairly soon. And I'm gonna show you some other charts that indicate that as well. Um, sorry, changing to red. And as soon as we do change to red, we're in the parabolic run-up phase. Now that doesn't happen all in one straight line, but it's when Bitcoin's ascent continues and we break all-time highs and then we go into new all-time highs and price discovery. So uh, all charts and all signs are pointing to the fact that we are picking up pace rapidly. We will have, I'm telling you, we will have that correction without a doubt, 20 to 50% at some point. But be ready, be ready to go in again at that at that moment. I am. I'm ready. You keep 10 to 20% of your holdings on the sidelines. Some people keep a little bit more. However you want to do it, just know that that's coming and try to be prepared for it. Next up, we this I like to look at charts like this comparing to previous bull runs. And a lot of people have been telling me which which bull previous bull run do you think this is more similar to? It's similar to different ones in different ways, but to the 2017 bull run, this is playing out pretty closely, right? So we have this ascending triangle after we hit the lows, after a long drawn out bull market, after we hit the lows, we go into this ascending triangle to which we break out from, and these are FIB levels. So I believe we're very close in this chart to the 2017 bull run, and so far it's playing out pretty on par. So as soon as we, so these are the FIB levels, as soon as we go and hit the, lo the lows from this long and drawn out bear market, we go into this ascending triangle formation. And then once we break out from that triangle, we run up, hit the two FIB level, and then we come back down to retest the base of the ascending triangle, which is previously resistance. And from there, we're off to the races. And that shows that in this third cycle here, or these are also FIB, uh, FIB levels time-wise, in this third cycle, we usually break the all-time high. So on this chart, that shows that this will happen sometime around December 2024, breaking the all-time highs and then going into new all-time highs. That's pretty on par for where I believe we could be in the next cycle. A lot of people say that we're going to go well into the depths of 2025, end of 2025. Some people even say January 2026. I don't believe we're going to go on that long. I think we're going to top out before then. Um, and so this is just something to watch. Right now, we're we're right around here. Will we have another run up to the two fib level or will we come back down and test our base first? Time will tell. I am, um, you know, either way, I'm prepared. Right now, we are looking at a couple of charts. So here's just some more charts showing, you know, the average of 800 days in between the cycle top and the next kind of phase where we're in the run up, the bull run, the actual bull run, not the pre bull run or the accumulation phase. Like I said, I count bull run as the first phase, which started in January 2023, but the actual ascent, Bitcoin's ascent. This chart shows we are almost there. We are right on track. And then we have another chart here. Bitcoin will enter the parabolic run soon. Nobody believes this. Everybody, we are in we're in deny we're in delusional phase. <laughs> That's what I want to call it. We're all delusional because we're like, there's no way this is happening after this, this everything that happened this past year. And and people have scars from this bull this bear market was, you know, it was very, very tough for a lot of people. And so we're in this phase where we're in disbelief. That's what it is on the Wall Street cheat sheet. Disbelief. And I think a lot of people will be caught got caught off guard when this actual parabolic bull run starts happening. Um, so here, this is the chart to watch, okay? This is the chart to watch, and this is what I've been telling you when we're gonna have our champagne at 45,000 when Bitcoin breaks and holds it. Uh, when could that happen? So as I've stated many times before on this channel, we've been looking at this rising channel on Bitcoin for a long time now, and if it breaks up out of this channel, we could see 42,000 to $44,000 Bitcoin, maybe even a little bit higher, Maybe then that'll be a, a grounds for toasting with champagne. However, if we break down, we could see 33, 31, and $30,000 Bitcoin. Not by far the end of the world. Mm, if that happens, you know, I'm loading up. And, and a lot of people are hoping that'll happen, which is why I think it might not. Also, the chart that I've showed you compared to previous bull cycles where these ascending 
wedges, these rising wedges, have broken out to the to the upside in a bullish environment. 68% chance says it'll break down from here on the bearish side. But in bullish environments and in bull markets, they often break to the upside, which leads to parabolic rises. So will we see a $44,000, $42,000 Bitcoin in the near future? It's quite possible. Next up. So this is a chart that I was really interested in. I saw it on Crypto Crew University's YouTube channel. So shout out to him. I really like his analysis because it's very long term. It's very uh, no BS. It's just long term charts and, and studying previous behavior and fractals. And so here we have a six month chart for Bitcoin. And basically what he says there is that every time since 2015, so the cycle since 2015 have gone like this. In that, I'll show you when I zoom in a little bit more, this first bullish engulfing candle, and a bullish engulfing candle is when the entire body of the candle, green candle, is bigger than the previous red candle, which shows a shift in the trend. After that first bullish engulfing candle, then we've got four candles. This is a six-month chart, keep in mind. So four candles until the top of, the of that cycle. So here we have one, two, three, four, and then we have the top. And then we have the next cycle, which here you had the last candle before the bullish green engulfing candle. And then you had one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four to the top, which is our real top. And this was our second top. And now we are currently on, this is our first bullish engulfing candle, our first candle. Our second candle will be, according to the six month chart, January 2024, our third candle will be July 2024, and our fourth candle will be January 2025. Now, could that be the top? Possibly, possibly. And that would kind of go against the odds of what a lot of people are saying, that 2025 is going to be, you know, this bull run is going two years at least and into 2026. There is a possibility that that could be the top. Then we've got the second candle, which could be our, our double top, just like we had last cycle, that would be in July 2025 or around there. So um, that coupled with uh, the 500 days from having selling, uh, that would put us in September 2025. And, you know, like, what do we do here? So this is like what a lot of YouTubers are using because if you can see here, I'll take a measurement from the last having which was around May to the top. It's about 540 days. So 500 days from the halving uh, next time would put us in September 2025. So this can mean several things according to dates. The first thing is we all can agree here that we're going to have a fantastic 2024 across many different charts, even people saying that we'll top out before or after. We can all agree 2024 is the year to make the money and the year that we must remember to take profits, stick to our strategy. Now, as we come into January 2025, that's when things start to get dicey and that's when we start getting into potentially troubled territories. And then if we have our second possible top, according to that previous chart with these six month candles, uh, indicating that we could get our second cycle top in July 2025. And then we've got the 500 days from having sell point mark in September 2025. So, you know, Q2, Q3, we're getting pretty overextended according to this analysis, but kind of in the middle of everybody else's analysis. So what do we do from there? Well, I mean, for me, it's crystal clear. I start to evaluate after we get this fourth candle in 2025. You start taking profits. The simple strategy here to take advantage of this entire wave is to take profits early and not care. Not care about whether you hit the top, whether you caught the bottom. The money is made in the middle, right? Somewhere in the middle and not by not timing the market. So to make sure that we've taken profits by then and to be sure to be really careful about assessing the market at that time. I'm sure we'll be in the midst of extreme euphoria, extreme greed, and people will be calling for, you know, that $300,000 or $400,000 Bitcoin. And we're going to keep our level heads at that time and not get sucked into the news. Now, 
Next up, altcoins. So that's Bitcoin as far as when Bitcoin can top. When can we expect altcoins to go on their massive run? So this is just something that I like to laugh about. Jim Cramer, of course, the you know, the counter indicator just said that he expects a mass- massive crash in altcoins coming soon. And basically, whatever Jim Cramer has said about crypto <laughs> in the, you know, in the past has resulted in totally the opposite. And so it's just become a meme and a joke in the crypto world. So now everybody's asking, will they go on a massive run because he's put this out there. So let's have a look first at some other indicators as to why we could be a little bit earlier on in the cycle than a lot of people think and closer to getting that big run. Um, And remember what Plan B said, we could get this parabolic run after having, if the ETF, Bitcoin ETF is not approved before then. So he's saying that if the Bitcoin ETF is approved before the halving, we could get a massive run up even before the halving. So keep that in mind. This is the DXY, so the dollar index compared to other basket of currencies. And this is shown like where we've had the, the crypto bull run in previous cycles. So, and this is also FIB based. This is a FIB based time measurement. Sorry, trend based FIB time measure, measurement. So the trend of, of the DXY according to the FIB over time. So as you can see here, the DXY peaked at the end of this trend based on time measurement. So he's gone through and mapped this out as far as time goes. Looking at this cycle now, uh, we have the low here, the high here. And as soon as we hit the high, we went into a crypto bull run, which was 2017. Then we hit the low. And then we had the 2020 crypto bull run. Then we hit another low. And now we are here. And now we're here, and according to the trend-based FIB time measurement, we could be seeing a peak right now, or close to right now. The DXY may peak at the end of this trend-based time measurement. So that was in October, and since then, the dollar has gone down. So could he be right? Could we be already in the beginning of this bull market phase, not pre-bull market, but bull market phase? Are we there right now? According to this chart, we are. Um, you know, we're starting to go down on the dollar and and we could be seeing a repeat in this cycle of the FIB time measurement. So yet another chart that shows us that we're close. Now back to the chart that is going to give us all the clues as to when to expect our precious altcoins to go on a massive run. And this is kind of like a more detailed chart. It's from Crypto uh, Revolution. And it's, it's giving us a more detailed chart on what's going on. So sorry if it looks messy, but I just want you to see all of the elements here. So the total three is a mixture of all the altcoins, the top 125 altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum and stable coins. Um, so these are the top 125 altcoins, and this is the market cap. So as you can see here, we have resistance at 420 billion, and we just had a 29% pump without a pullback practically with the altcoins. The question is, we're still at this resistance. Will we pull back from here or will we break out and just start pumping? Um, And it's gone through and mapped out here. As you can see, the RSI is very overbought, but last time it was overbought um, and the price still worked higher. All other times, RSI was overbought and altcoins pulled back. So it's just pointing out that this time RSI was overbought and the price worked higher. But most of the other times that altcoins were at this level, they corrected. So there there are some instances where altcoins continue to run based on, despite being overbought on the RSI, will this time be one of those times? Time will tell. We are still, we're right there. We're still in the crossroads, like I said in my video in Lisbon the other day, and we're still waiting for a decision to be made. Either way, I believe we are much far along this cycle than last cycle, and we have a lot to look forward to, but we must start getting prepared with a sense of urgency, not rush urgency. Um, So here you have a more cleaned up chart as to where we are with altcoins. We've got resistance at around 422 billion, and we're just right there. We're just right there. What will we do next? That is the question. But I want to show you something on the ADA chart about also why it seems to me things are working a little bit faster this cycle. So this is the Cardano chart, the infamous Cardano, my 65x banger from last cycle. And as you can see here, when we finally broke and started to hold 
the 50 and the 21 day moving averages was right here around where the halving was last cycle. And then we even lost it a little bit and then broke back up. And so we kind of played with that level, but it was not until the halving that we broke that level. Now, this cycle, we've already broken both of those levels November. So just based on that alone is, is an indicator that we're moving along a little bit faster than we had in previous cycles. The altcoins are starting to wake up and all signs point to the fact that we are on the verge of starting this new bull run, the parabolic phase. Not so next up, I want to highlight this because I told you I was going to go over three altcoins today. This is Sergey Nazarov, uh, the co-founder of Link. And I am just such a big proponent of finding those gems, those altcoin gems that are going to massively disrupt this space, regardless of how slow price is moving. And placing your bets on those horses and letting price work itself out, not trying to chase the newest, trendiest coin. I do have one of those new trendy coins on this stream, so stay tuned to the end to find out what it is. But this is, is a kind of like proven to be like the time old method of just taking the ones that have been building and really actively doing things throughout these cycles and improving and getting those powerful partnerships that will be like the the brick and the foundation of this space for the time to come. They're laying the foundation as we speak for the future of this space. And that is chain link. So look what he says here. So Sam Altman says, this is back in 2017. Okay. Bitcoin rallies are so fun. And then Sergey says, imagine if we could all have invested in Linux, SSL or HTTP with a token that incentivized their development. Now that would have been fun. Hint, hint, wink, wink, <laughs> chain link. I mean, Chainlink is going to do that for blockchain. It is going it, it is going to surprise a lot of investors, to say the least, because it's very necessary. It's necessary infrastructure for the internet and for chains to become interoperable, to bring that off-chain data on-chain. And it's going to surprise a lot of people this cycle and the cycles to come. Now, Sergey Nazarov predicts financial reckoning that could lead to rapid crypto adoption. So here it is, the Chainlink co-founder saying that actually this is what could lead to crypto adoption being even faster than people anticipated. It's already the fastest growing technology adoption curve in history. And he's saying that this could even speed up that process. So Chainlink creator Sergey Nazarov says that a financial cataclysm could trigger a rush into digital assets and blockchain ecosystems. In a new interview, Nazarov outlines what he calls a global correction back to reality, where blockchain technology is integrated with the financial system and other industries to bring about a more trustworthy, verifiable economy. So he's, he's saying that the financial industry is going to flock to this technology in order to make it better. And as they really start to realize the improvements that it could have and the benefit it can have for them in this financial industry is what's going to speed up adoption for sure. Um, Nazarov says that an economic crisis in some form could be the precursor. I think we're moving towards some class of economic crisis in various economies because of a really, really weird, but perhaps necessary, I can't tell, economic decisions by various large actors. And I think there will be a reckoning for all that of all all of that value and all of that. And I do believe that blockchain technology will be gradually adopted for its massive benefits. So really cool. I mean, he's just saying that basically all the big guys in Wall Street and all the financial institutions are going to understand how blockchain can revolutionize and improve upon their systems and they're gonna flock to it. Floodgates will open up and they'll start using this. We'll see, time will tell. Uh, the next thing on the list is going over banks. Banks are just outing themselves left and right. So it, it's not just that they're going down um, or that they are failing or collapsing because they are basically massive Ponzi schemes and they work on fractional reserves, meaning they lend out most of the money that you deposit. So if a lot of people at once want to withdraw their money, especially big portions of their money, it may not be available. And then we have lending giant fined 15 million for withdrawing funds from bank accounts without consent, deceiving customers with false statements. One of the largest licensed lenders in the U.S. will pay 15 million for widespread illegal conduct, including withdrawing funds from bank customer bank accounts. I mean, it sounds like the FTX of banks 
only it's a normalized practice in the banking world because it's bailed out by the government. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says it's banning the Chicago-based lender Innova for, from offering certain consumer loans after the firm violated orders to change its deceptive practices. So basically they were deceiving people or tricking them into signing some things that allowed for them to withdraw funds from their account and a big mess, another fine, but a slap on the wrist and they move on. It's been that way since the beginning of time with banks. And finally, J.P. Morgan Chase rejects customers after 11000 stolen from bank account. Victim says, money is almost safer in my pocket. People are starting to realize that they aren't protected by these banks anymore. This was an older gentleman that could have sworn that the scammer that called him using Chase's very own system against him and believed without a doubt he was talking to someone from Chase Security So, of course, the same thing that happens in crypto is happening here in the banks, only people have felt that at least they have protection from these banks. Uh, You know, they have protection and they don't. They don't. They really don't. Uh, So basically, he sent a one time code. The guy authorized it. Wolf says he then realized something was not right and he called the bank directly. But despite his fast action, 11,000 was stolen from his account and Chase denied his claim. So it happened quickly and he got absolutely no assistance. I mean, even in in crypto, when your funds get stolen, you know, if if it's Tether or you're working with centralized exchanges, they can freeze the accounts and they can try to help you get it back somehow in that way. But this bank, JP Morgan, just directly said, hey, sorry, Chase, um, directly. Yeah. JP Morgan Chase said, no, sorry, we don't want anything to do with this. You lost your funds. It's your fault. And you know what? Like, what is the point of using a bank? If you, you're not guaranteed to be able to withdraw your money at any point in time, which you want, your bank account can get frozen due to reasons outside of your control, and you don't get help recovering stolen funds. I mean, all of the things that people traditionally trusted banks for are starting to you know lose their charm. They're not there anymore. And so this is like leading more and more toward you know people wanting to have that freedom to choose. And if they have to be responsible for their own money anyway, why not go where you can be totally, totally free to do whatever you want with your money? Blockchain. Bitcoin, baby, Bitcoin. Now, into the altcoin, the surprise altcoin for today. I actually started accumulating this last cycle, did very well with my clients. AVAX Avalanche is back from the dead. There's been a lot of FUD going around uh, about Avalanche. And, you know, it's just one of those chains. It wasn't it wasn't like highly talked about last cycle, but I think this cycle it could have a big chance of succeeding again. And JP Morgan tests tokenized portfolios with Avalanche. That's huge. That is big. So JP Morgan blockchain arm Onyx has collaborated with a suite of industry startups to create proof of concept. The blockchain stacks chosen for this proof of concept include Provenance Blockchain, JP Morgan's own Onyx Digital Assets, and Avalanche, cross-chain communication protocol and Axelar, an issuance slashing trading platform Oasis. Oasis is another one that we were also accumulating last cycle as a low cap gem. So interesting to note that Avalanche has landed this potential partnership with JP Morgan, it's put it back in the spotlight. A few quotes from industry leaders here. Avalanche consensus is well suited for building DeFi apps due to its scalability, particularly its high throughput and near instant finality. That's Stanley Kulichov, the founder of Aave, one of the most important DeFi, if not the most important DeFi protocols in all the blockchain space. And and Stanley is the founder. And here we have Sergey Naz- Nazarov, so the co-founder of Chainlink. High-speed financial applications are the norm for Web 2 and Web 3. To compete and have parity with Web 2, you need a high-speed chain. Avalanche gets us closer and closer and possibly arriving at parity with the speed of the Web 2 systems. So those are two very reputable people in this space that are saying that Avalanche might be a very good alternative. Time will tell. But Avalanche is back on the radar. Uh, Then we have this, this... article that says get ahead of the curve. So Caspa is one of the surprise altcoins I wanted to talk about. If you're in this industry and you've been listening to a lot of crypto YouTube influencers, Caspa has been on all their radars. I've been in a trading group where we've been trading Caspa, but I haven't really talked about it um, as far as an investment standpoint goes. But this says get ahead of the curve. Caspa 
ELG and Chainlink. Well, the two I want to talk about are evidently Caspa and Chainlink on this list. So Caspa redefining layer one blockchain. So again, a new, new narrative, a new layer one that's coming into existence just before the bull run is kind of like Solana. Kind of like Solana last time. So people are really excited about this. Is there room for another L1? Caspa thinks so. By focusing on scale and speed, Caspa aims to become a significant player in the growing DeFi space. While other layer ones like Ethereum have faced challenges in high gas fees and scalability, Caspa uses the Ghost DAG protocol to facilitate concurrent block assimilation, distinguishing Caspa from conventional linear block assembly. So I will be going over the difference on a more altcoin deep dive, but just know that it's it's kind of a very new and innovative way of doing things, and Caspa is taking this world by storm. So more on Caspa in a minute. Chainlink. Chainlink's CCIP. So this is what I discussed in the last episode, enabling the future of cross-chain transactions. Tokenization is the future of finance thanks to its efficiency, transparency, and cost-effectiveness. Cost effectiveness. However, on which on which blockchain will these digital assets be built, and how can banks prepare to function in this new ecosystem? Chainlink provides a pr- practical answer. So Chainlink has a place in this bridging the Web two to Web three and the financial institutions to blockchain. That is a very big spot to fill, and Chainlink is set to take over that space. Chainlink has just unveiled its innovative CCIP. This avant-garde solution allows institutions to receive and send tokens across various blockchains, enabling seamless cross-chain transactions. In my opinion, there is not another player in this space that is even close to the par that Chainlink is on. And that is why I think that we are buying $100 bills with $15 bills at this point in time and actually far beyond that. So yes, I believe Chainlink will hit $100 and well beyond most likely even in this very bull run. The token is currently valued at, well, $7 at the time of this article. This is a growing belief that breaking the $10 barrier will send Chainlink to uh, $100. Absolutely, in my opinion. Uh, So Chainlink is going to be one powerful, powerful coin this run, especially if it's what Sergey is predicting, that this is going to be the time when crypto gets adopted more quickly because financial institutions are flocking to the powers of blockchain technology. So as we have a look at the Caspa chart right now, we're consolidating. We're here at about just above 14 cents in an ascending triangle. Uh, If we break out of this triangle, then we'll be headed to anywhere between 19 to 18 cents and beyond. I am looking to possibly accumulate some Caspa at a certain point, but it is not one of those foundational coins in my portfolio at the moment. And I just wanted to end this stream on Solana. There is a lot of hype around Solana right now. Um, And you know what? It kind of reminds me of what happened last time when there was a lot of hype around Solana and it was right around this point. This is right around where I invested last time around $24. Uh, There had been a lot of hype throughout this entire period and it was in its correction phase. Possibly we'll head into a correction phase now if we don't break that total three um, market cap for altcoins, then possibly we'll have a correction out of Solana now. Uh, But Yeah, it's feeling like last bull market vibes, only much more advanced with the stronger community. It survived the FTX debacle. And I I am more and more believing that Solana is going to have its place in this bull run in a big way. And I evidently believe we can hit $500 and beyond for Solana. Um, So it's exciting times, guys. It's exciting times. And what I want you to stick with after today's stream is that The bull run may come much quicker than you think, so don't get caught on the sidelines. If you don't have any exposure, that doesn't mean go all in now. It just means stop waiting for the right time and just get started. And at least now you have an idea of where I believe we could top out anywhere from January 2025 to July 2025 if we're really extended, possible second top, and maybe beginning of Q3, but I believe that we will probably top out before then. So now we have the playbook. We understand more or less the timing of what this bull market could produce. So based on this data and these facts, let's start building that portfolio. This week is all going to be all about altcoin deep dives, and um, we'll be watching that rising wedge on Bitcoin as well as that total three of the altcoin market cap like a hawk. 
to figure out when Bitcoin will be headed into its parabolic run. Um, it's going to be a very exciting week. Thank you for being here today. I really enjoyed this stream and until tomorrow.